and welcome to Browsing the Bible. I'm Scott Burgess, and who do I have again with me today? Elijah. Elijah, that's right. We're continuing our look here at the story of the Noah and the Flood. And so in today, uh, I'd like you to begin, Elijah, if you would. Could you read verse 1 for us, please? Sure. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Very good. Notice how it says that the Lord saw him. That's an important concept. We noticed in our last study here from Genesis chapter 6 that when God saw the earth, he made a determination. When God sees things, for instance, Amos 9, 8, the eyes of the Lord were upon the sinful kingdom. He determined he would destroy it. On the other hand, 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9, the eyes of the Lord were running to and fro the earth, throughout the earth to show himself strong in behalf of those who are wholehearted toward him. So when he sees that Noah was righteous before me in this generation, that means he is going to save him. Okay. okay. So that's what God wants to do with everybody. At that point, what happens to all the animals, Elijah? They get on the ark. That's right. They get on in pairs. All the unclean animals get on a single pair at a time. Mm -hmm. And it says that all the clean animals, in verse 2, that they are to go in, in seven pairs, a male and a female. All right. So then once everybody is aboard the ark right there, something strange happens. Could you read verse 4 for us? And let's see what, what happens here. Sure. For seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth. Forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. Hmm. So Noah did what God directed him. And then in verse 7 it says that Noah went in, and his sons and his wife and his sons was with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. And then it says it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. So they had to wait in the ark seven days. How would you like to be in that ark, Elijah, for seven days? The whole world has thought that you're crazy for 120 years making the ark. And then you're inside and nothing's happening. What do you think it felt like to be in that ark? Um, it may have felt kind of strange. Probably so. It'd be yeah. kind of a test. You know, everyone else is saying, look at that silly old man in there with his family, right? God had a plan for him. Well... The Bible tells us, it gives us a good idea why they had to wait seven days. Remember, we said the ark, as well as the Garden of Eden, were both sanctuaries, right? Mm -hmm. The sanctuary had just been built, but in the wilderness, before a sanctuary could go into operation, something has to happen. What do you have to do to the sanctuary? As a matter of fact, what, even today, when somebody builds a boat, before they launch the boat, they have a certain kind of ceremony. What kind of a ceremony do they have? Sometimes they take a bottle and they'll smack it on the side of the boat. And what are they doing? They're making sure it's waterproof. <laughs> well, that might be a good test too. <laughs> but they're dedicating it. They're dedicating oh, they're it. Dedicating it. God yeah. always dedicates the sanctuary before it's put into operation. Yeah. He has to dedicate both the boat as well as those in it. Let's take a look here in the Bible, Elijah. Let's see this for ourselves. Yeah. That's a good answer, but <laughs> not quite biblical. But in Leviticus chapter 8 right here, this is referring to Moses' tabernacle. But we're going to see there's a seven-day waiting period, and we'll, that'll help us understand what this seven-day waiting period was. So in Leviticus chapter 8, if you would, notice right here in verses 33 through 36, the instructions that Moses have here, he's talking to Aaron, who's going to be the high priest, and his four mm -hmm. sons, who will be the, shall we say, the assistant priests. Yep. It says, And ye shall not go out of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation for how many days? Seven days. Until the days of your consecration be at an end. For seven days shall he consecrate you. And there they were to abide right there. And it says, So Aaron and his sons did all the things which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting, because right over here, it says that there would be a seven-day waiting period after Noah and his family got in the ark, mm -hmm. and then guess what? That was in Genesis 7, verse 4, but notice what it says over here in Genesis 7, verse 5. 
For seven days, they're going to have to wait in the ark. And then in verse 5, what does it say? And Noah did what? Did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Wait a minute. So Moses told them, you'll have to wait seven days. And it said Moses did all that was commanded to him. Here, Noah and his family have to get on, wait for seven days. And Noah did all that God commanded him. It's the seven-day consecration period for that family and for that ark. The ark is a sanctuary, folks. It's a beautiful story of salvation. It's not just an exciting story about how some people survived a great big flood. It's a story of salvation. This is a story that gives an illustration of how God works in you and in me and anybody who's willing to be saved. So after the seven days, the sanctuary is ready for service. Uh, does God ever waste time, Elijah? No. Nope. If something has come to a close, like for instance a dedication service, what do you think is going to happen right then? Like if the sanctuary is dedicated for service, then what does God do? He, he comes in and he fills it. That's right. The sanctuary is going to be put right into service that very moment. So just as soon as those seven days of consecration were done, and God saw they were faithful, he said, the sanctuary is ready. The floods came and that ark did its job. It was the means of salvation for Noah and his family. And all of us that have ever lived can be thankful that Noah and his family got on that ark and were faithful to God. Uh, and in verse 23 here of Genesis 7 right here, we always want to make sure that we get the real big idea right here. It says that every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground with man, cattle, creeping things, and the fowl or the bird of the heavens. And they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive and they that were with him in the ark. That's right. We all have a choice, too. We know that the end of the world is coming. We know that it's going to be, in this case, not destroyed by water, but by fire. Mm -hmm. But does God offer us safety right now? Yes. Where do we need to go? We need to get on the... Ark. Or we need to go into the sanctuary. By faith, we can go into the sanctuary that's in heaven right now, where Jesus is interceding. Mm -hmm. And just as he saved Noah and his family there, so he will save us if we are willing. Is that right? Yes. That's right. I hope that you will put your faith in Jesus and that just as Noah and his, his three sons, his wife and their three wives, the, uh, the eight of them, that faithful remnant was saved. May you choose to be part of God's faithful remnant at the end of earth's history, telling people to get on the ark of safety, to come worship Jesus in spirit and in truth. Until next time, continue to please browse your Bible. Bye-bye.